Good morning, everyone. I am Anirban Mojumdar. I am a PhD student in uh, LSB France and in Rennes in France, under Nathalie and Patricia. So this work is on concurrent parameterized games. So these games are quite different games than we had uh, this morning. Uh, so I'll quickly recall what games are in these settings, and I'll uh, move to our model. So when we talk about games, we generally talk about uh, games on uh, finite graphs. So we have a finite graph and in turn based two player games what happens is that so we have two players player and one player one and player two so we have two types of vertices in the graph circle vertices and uh, square vertices so circle vertices are controlled by player one and square vertices are controlled by player two so how does the game proceed uh, so it starts from some initial vertex for example this one and uh, so this is player one's vertex player one will choose to go to one of these two vertices so maybe he will choose this one then, then this is player two's vertex so he will choose to go to the next one and next one and so on so this is called a play and uh, a winning ob objective is uh, given uh, for player one as a set of plays and we check if there exist uh, winning strategies for the players so it is well known that we have uh, position and winning strategies for well known uh, winning conditions for example reachability safety so by position and winning strategies we mean uh, from some particular vertex uh, player strategy does not depend on the past history then people define something called concurrent two player games what are these games so uh, here we have only one type of uh, vertices uh, so don't confuse these circles with the circles in the previous slide uh, here we have two players and they choose actions from a b so in the graph the transitions are labeled with uh, two letter words and players choose actions simultaneously and how does the game proceed so next vertex is determined by the chosen actions of the player for example uh, if player one chooses a and player two chooses b since a b is in this transition so game will proceed from v naught to v2 so the main difference is from uh, from the previous model is that uh, here players choose the action simultaneously where we, in the previous one we called that was was uh, turn based so their player used to choose one by one okay so if we want to find player one strategy here it is well known that we can convert this one to a turn based game where uh, this circle vertex well again this circle circle is not same as this circle so this circle vertex will correspond to player one's uh, vertex and we can show that player one has a winning strategy in this concurrent game if and only if circle player has a winning strategy in this turn based game so this is well known and uh, one can uh, generalize this thing to k player concurrent game in the sense that uh, now the transitions have uh, levels uh, k length words and there are k players so game proceeds according so they choose action simultaneously and again game proceeds accordingly for example if first one chooses a and the rest rest of all choose b then since a b power k minus 1 is in this transition it will go from v naught to v2 and now i'll move to concurrent parameterized game so one natural question one can ask in this uh, concurrent game model is that what if we don't fix the number of players so uh, what is the parameter here is uh, number of players so again we have some uh, actions a b so if we want to general uh, extend the previous example in this setting what happens is that we say if everyone so we consider player one versus rest of the world which we call environment so player one does not know how many players are playing so we say that whatever number of player is playing if all of them choose the same later then the game goes here otherwise game goes here so this is just a toy example I, i'll i'll explain this in the next slide uh, soon uh, so just before this so this is just a toy example so our main uh, model is like this so the transitions are labeled with regular languages and uh, based on the choices the word belongs to which language depending on that the game will proceed to the next vertex um not necessarily language can be there can be intersect intersecting i mean not necessarily rejoined yes so i'll i'll explain in the next slide yeah so 
and we say that player one wins if he can win against every number of opponents and every choice of the opponents. Okay, so formally, how does the game proceed? Um, first, environment chooses the number of players, which will be fixed throughout the game, but player one does not know. Good. Then player one will choose some action A1, and other other players will also choose some actions, and this forms a word. And then environment chooses the vertex such that this word belongs to, for example, if this word belongs to L1, then uh, environment will choose V1. So if there is some non-determinism, environment will break the non-determinism. Environment has the power to break the non-determinism. And uh, again, from uh, VI, we again, uh, so player 1 again choose and others also choose. So the game continues. And we say that player 1 wins if he wins against every choice of others and for every number of opponents. Okay. So here is a small example which also answers the question that, uh, well, uh, a spoiler is that uh, positional strategies will not suffice. Um, uh, for example, uh, here at the first vertex player 1 only has one choice is that A. So what does it say? If there is one opponent, whatever he chooses, the game goes from V1 to V2. If there is two, op two or more opponents, the game goes from V1 to V3. But player 1 does not know how many opponents he have, he has here. So at V4, if pl player 1 has two choices now, A and B, but if he chooses A and there is only one opponent, then go to V5, otherwise go to V6 and vice versa for B. And objective for player 1 is to reach the yellow state. So here player 1 actually has a winning strategy is that, so when he comes to V4, looking at the history, he can infer that if the history is V1, V2, V4, then there is only one opponent otherwise if the history was v1 v3 v4 then he had only uh, he had two or more opponents and he can play accordingly a or b to reach this state but there is no winning strategy no, no position of winning strategy because at v4 only playing a might lose only playing b also might lose now a simplification is that in this particular example we saw that uh, players uh, opponents choices actually don't matter so we replace this uh, sigma to be like uh, number of opponents. So similar number of opponents here. And one observation is that for general case also, if we are interested in uh, looking at player one's winning strategy, then uh, only number of opponents matter. So we replace this uh, transitions by, so first component is player one's choice and the second component is the uh, set of opponents. So um, yeah. This is our uh, new simplified game and uh, it is already known that if, if L is regular, so we assume that L is regular. In that case, a set of lengths of all overs is semilinear. We want to investigate this model for semilinear sets, but we uh, do it for three subcases is that intervals, union of intervals and semilinear sets. So because uh, we will have different complexities and yeah, complexities are the main results here. Mm. So since the game has changed, I will quickly tell you what the game is now. Uh, so here environment chooses the number of opponents and player one then choose some action sigma and then environment chooses vi such that k belongs to that set. So now environment only breaks the uh, non-determinism such that this number of player belongs to that set. So here opponents now don't have any uh, actions to play and uh, game will proceed to vi and so on and we say that p1 wins if he wins for every k. So now we want to solve this game. Uh, we will reduce this game to a standard two player game. Uh, suppose this is the game arena. So here we have if only one opponent is there then go, goes to V2. If more than two then goes to V3. So this will we will reduce to two player game with some knowledge of player one. So here if this is the initial vertex, V1 is the initial vertex, then here uh, player 1 knows that uh, he has, he can have any number of opponent. So he stores that like 1 infinity and this is an environment vertex. If the game goes here, then player 1 can infer that he had only one opponent. So we mark this state as V2, 1 and similarly V2, 2 infinity. In the general case, what we do is that uh, it's quite similar, for example, so if in the knowledge game player 1 had knowledge k uh, and uh, v1 and if the game takes this transition then uh, at this node he has this information that he is in v2 and uh, the knowledge is k intersection s1.
and it's uh, yeah so this is just the previous example uh, uh, reducing to time based game here we can see that there are two different paths for uh, one opponent and two or two two or more opponents and here player one actually has a winning strategy as we saw here and it can be shown that uh, player one has a winning strategy if and only if circle player has a winning strategy there so this immediately uh, gives the decidability result because this game is finite why we only take uh, intersections over the sets given in the input so we cannot make like infinite number of sets so this immediately gives the decidability but uh, next i'll talk about complexity so briefly uh, concurrent games were defined previously and uh, what we do is that uh, we say well a natural uh, extension can be if uh, we don't know the number of players and we saw that strategies uh, memorialized strategies are not enough and it is enough to restrict to only number of opponents and we saw the desirability result okay so here are the complexity results so as i said like uh, the con complexities are different for uh, different uh, sub cases intervals is easy it's p time and for unions of intervals it's actually interesting that for deterministic it's np complete and for non deterministic is n p space complete and for general semi linear sets like for general language uh, uh, languages so it's p space complete and these two proofs are similar and uh, yeah for unions of intervals and intervals the complexities are on number of n points uh, given in the input and here also it's on the number of similar sets given in the input it's not like uh, it's the, it doesn't does not depend on the encoding of the input like how do you encode binary or something it does not depend on that okay so the easiest case is intervals uh, why is it polynomial because uh, if in the game arena you are given uh, only intervals then you can only cons construct quadratic many uh, intervals out of that so this gives the polynomial size knowledge game and we know that turn based games are solvable in polynomial time well for reachability you don't know for variety and uh, for so that gives us uh, polynomial solve polynomial time solvable for this game now i'll move to semi linear sets yes. so in general uh, for semi linear sets this game this knowledge game construction can be exponential size um, but we can see in the next slide that next slide that uh, we can have a polynomial space algorithm the polynomial space p space algorithm so we are only solving for reachability uh, goes in two steps i'll try to um, briefly give the idea so we have the knowledge game which is pretty big which is exponential but somehow we want to restrict the knowledge game so suppose in the knowledge game we are in uh, vertex v and knowledge k and uh, suppose this is the knowledge game so dotted line means uh, there might be more successors or something uh, so we want to somehow restrict this knowledge game how we stop at any vertex where the knowledge strictly decreases so for example uh, here the knowledge is still k so we explore but here the knowledge strictly less so we don't explore we stop here so what happens is that in this small game every vertex has knowledge k or exactly one with small so it will have a polynomial size so it is it gives a polynomial size game this restriction and this can be solvable in polynomial time so uh, this gives a structure something like this um, maybe we start from v0 and n and uh, it can go here 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 so here the knowledge is k1 here the knowledge is k2 or something so each of each is of size polynomial now the idea is to uh, solve this polynomial size games and reuse the same space so this is the step 2 applying dfs uh, we want to so if v0 is the initial vertex and k0 is the initial knowledge then we want to uh, check the winning status of this vertex for player 1 right so what we do we expand this uh, vertex uh, to the restriction of the game so to the restriction and suppose somehow by dfs we already know the winning status of player 1 here and here so now we forget this subtree and we explore the red ones so we explore the red ones again suppose this one is uh, done uh, and we explore the red ones so like this this uh, branching is polynomial because this game is polynomial and also at a time we are only saving polynomially height tree so this 
at, at one time we are only saving polynomial size uh, tree. Now, how do we tag win or lose a, a vertex in this tree? Uh, well, if, if this vertex is target for example, here we say that yes, this is reachable by player 1. So, we say this is winning and uh, in other case, so for example, if, uh, if here everything is known, what we do is that we solve this small game for player 1 and uh, if player ha 1 has a winning strategy in this small game, then we tag this vertex as winning. So, for example, if 4 of these, we already know the status, then we solve this small game and accordingly we tag this one and then forget the subtree and then again the again we explore the next vertex. So, this way we can uh, actually explore uh, using DFS uh, this tree and also we can show that this uh, tree. So, in this initial uh, node the tree has uh, tag winning if and only if player 1 has a winning strategy in the knowledge game. So, this gives a p space upper bound and this proof also works for uh, also holds for uh, unions of intervals. Um, yeah, this is the same proof basically. But for unions of intervals, for deterministic case, uh, we can show that it's NP because uh, so deterministic means uh, this is basically a, a partition of n. So yeah, this is always a partition. So player one actually can guess a strategy which will uh, which will be of polynomial size. Why? Because at every step this will be a partition of n using only the n points given in the input. So, this uh, width is polynomial and also this height is polynomial. So, this tree size is polynomial yeah. and, on, and uh, I am not showing the hardness proofs, but we can we have hardness proofs also uh, from reduction uh, by reduction from SAT, but I am not going to show that. So, now we are trying to work on uh, a related model which we call which we may call parameterized synthesis is like here also we do not know the number of players. So, the transitions are again leveled with uh, regular languages. Now, this is not player 1 versus everyone this is like a coalition game. So, everyone is playing together and want to win the game. For example, if uh, here the transition is A star B then they reach the winning state. So, it means if the last player play B then they reach the winning state, but they do not know how many players are there. But in this particular example, what they can do is that uh, player I play B at ith round. So, for example, player 1 first play B, if he is the last player, he goes to everyone goes to the winning state. If he is not, other ones will play A. So, they will loop until the last player comes and plays a B and goes to the winning state. So, here yeah, we assume that players somehow know their ID, but they do not know how many players are there. So, yeah, it is not quite formalized, but yeah, this is a kind of future direction we want to pursue. So, to conclude, as we saw, we generalize the two player concurrent games and we consider the scenario player one versus uh, everyone else. We saw that uh, only um, memoryless strategies are not enough. Uh, we proved desirability by knowledge game construction which is finite and we saw that uh, p space completeness for general case, but better bounds for other simpler cases that is it. Thank you. So, um, the uh, well, so the knowledge game construction uh, is just uh, reducing it to player game and we can check Bushi for the knowledge game construction. So, desirability is uh, clear enough, but we are not sure about complexity. So, what happens the Okay, yeah. So, so this yeah, mm, we do not know. I mean, yeah. In this model, we say that it is fixed throughout the game, but we do not know about dynamic number of players.